Admiral. I'm here to run you through the basics of the interface you will be using to control the carrier. Let's begin with controlling the camera. Use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. To rotate the view around the carrier, move the mouse while holding the right mouse button or use the double. Perfect. Next, I'll cover moving the vessel. We begin by setting a waypoint. Please click the tactical map icon. This is the tactical map menu. You can see our carrier's current position, represented by the highlighted marker. To direct our course, you must begin by clicking this marker. Next, click your intended destination on the map. Vantage point one, our current goal, is highlighted here. Perfect, our course is set. Click the exit button to close the tactical map menu. To get moving, we must now start the engines. Click the carrier speed icon, then click the desired speed to begin moving our fleet. Please select slow. Higher speeds are unavailable for now. We're moving. For the time being, we must wait for our strike group to reach its destination. You can control the speed of the ongoing action using the speed controls in the bottom right corner of the screen. Excellent! We have reached our first destination. Traveling the seas depletes our resources. When we are out of supplies, the carrier can still continue moving, but we cannot deploy any aircraft. We will discuss the finer points of variables relating to supply use later. To resupply the carrier, you must give the order. To get started, open the order menu by clicking the icon below. Next, please click the resupply ship icon to begin preparing the order. You must now assign officers to the order. Officer's expertise in one of two fields, Navy or Air, is measured by numerical scores shown beside their portraits. To execute an order, the assigned officer's collective scores must meet the requirements shown on that order's icon. Of course, you have expertise in both fields, Admiral. Click your portrait to assign yourself to the resupply ship order. You can now confirm the order by clicking the highlighted icon. This will initiate the resupply process. Now we must wait for the resupply procedure to reach completion. Let me remind you, Admiral, that you can use the time speed controls to speed up the action while we wait. Excellent. Perhaps we should increase our speed for the journey toward our next destination. To do so, we will need more crew assigned to our navigation department. Click the crew management icon to begin. In this menu, you can manage onboard personnel assigned to each department. Drag and drop two additional crew units to the navigation department. The walking animation indicates that they are still in the process of taking their position. You can also increase the speed of this action using the time speed controls. The units are in position. You can now close the crew management menu, sir. With the increased manpower in the navigation department, we can now reach maximum speed. Click the carrier speed icon. Next, we must set our course. Open the tactical map and click our fleet. There is land between us and our destination, so we cannot travel as the crow flies but we can plot a course of up to three waypoints by clicking on a series of points, ending with our destination. Right-click a waypoint to remove it.
We have received information about an unidentified object some distance from here. I recommend that we carry out a reconnaissance mission. Click the island or press 3 on your keyboard to begin the preparations. And this view shows the island where you and your officers coordinate the ship's operations. Each room provides a facility called a switch for carrying out three functions. Each room switch can only be set to enable one function at a time. Set the switch in the meteorology room to add one times recon mission. Time to work. Click the Combat Information Center, CIC, to send an officer there. In this case, yourself, Admiral. An officer will be temporarily unavailable while moving between rooms. When you reach CIC, set the room switch to add one times identify target's mission. The function enabled by the switch in the meteorology room will remain active even when there is no officer in the room. On the double. Now we can find out more about the information we received by opening the tactical map menu. Here you can see the location of the unknown object, represented by a marker. Let's return to the carrier and prepare a mission to find out more about it. Next, we must enter the deck view. Click the deck of the carrier using your mouse or press 1 on your keyboard. Here you can prepare the aircraft for dispatching on missions. Click the plus icon and select dive bombers to position a squadron on the deck. You'll then see the planes being hauled onto the deck. Click the plus icon and position a second squadron of dive bombers, sir. Missions currently available for execution are shown in the available section of the missions panel below. Hover over the highlighted recon icon and click the prepare button. Then click your chosen target of the recon mission and click a place on the map to set it as the recovery area, the place where you will pick up our returning planes. In this case, I suggest selecting our vessel's current location, sir. Click confirm to complete the plan. Preparations for the mission are complete, Admiral. You can now close the map. We are ready to launch the mission. Hover over the highlighted recon icon in the ready section of the mission's panel and click the launch icon. The airmen will depart shortly. Launch aircraft! The mission has begun. You can observe its progress by opening the tactical map view, sir. To track the progress of a particular mission, now we must wait for their mission report. As always, Admiral, you can speed up the passage of time by using the time speed controls. The reconnaissance mission report has been received, sir. It was merely a group of whales. No adversaries were found. We must now prepare the deck for the recovery of our returning aircraft. Please click confirm to close the report and then close the tactical map. Click the deck management icon above. As you can see, the deck is currently in the launching state. Click the recovery icon on the left of the panel to prepare the carrier for receiving our incoming aircraft. When aircraft returning from a mission are ready to land, the mission's icon will appear in the recovery section of the panel below. Hover over the highlighted icon to open the panel and then click the recover button. Stand by to recover aircraft. The mission was completed successfully, sir. Click the deck management icon again 
and set the deck state back to launching to prepare for further missions. Clear the flight deck and prepare for... We have received information regarding another potential target. Admiral, I'll run through the reconnaissance process again. Hover over the recon mission icon below, click the prepare button. Then set the mission's target and recovery area in the tactical map view, followed by clicking confirm. Use the missions panel below to launch the mission. Later, set the deck state to recovery and recover the aircraft as before. Clear the flight deck. A plane is approaching landing. We spot the deck. Prepare for launching. Start engines. enemy vessels nearby. We need to determine the fleet's strength and makeup before engaging it in combat. First, open the deck management menu and change the state back to launching. An identified target's mission can then be prepared and launched in much the same way as a recon mission. We spot the deck, prepare for launching. report contained all the information we needed about the composition of the enemy fleet, sir. Now we know what we're up against. Enter the island view to begin preparations for combat. Click the Meteorology Room Admiral. There, you can set the switch to add one times airstrike mission. Is now. Now, you can use the deck management panel to set the deck to its launching state, sir. When there are no crew units assigned to the air department, we can only manage three squadrons on the deck, which is insufficient for an attack, of course. Let's open the crew management menu to allocate the staff we need. As we require five squadrons for the airstrike, we need to assign two crew units to the air department. The unit is on its way, sir. Now you can assign another. We have the personnel we need for our strike. Let's return to the ship. Prepare an airstrike mission using the panel below. Once you have selected our target, we can pre This is the menu for preparing our attack strategy, Admiral. A strategy comprises a set of five maneuvers, each represented by a card. There are three different types of maneuver. Offensive, red. Defensive, blue. And supportive, green. You can switch between these categories by clicking the tabs to the left of the cards. For this assault, sir, I recommend that we place the offensive maneuver, Anvil Attack, in slot number one. Slot number five would be an ideal place for a defensive maneuver, Jinky. 
as we require more defense, I suggest allocating supportive maneuver strike from the sun to slot number two. If you approve of my recommendations, Admiral, please click the confirm button. As always, we need to specify the recovery area where our airmen will wait for pickup. For the purposes of this mission, I suggest clicking the current location of our fleet. Now click confirm, sir. Next, we need to return to the deck and prepare our squadrons for the mission. We already have the necessary dive bombers on deck. In addition, we need three more squadrons for this engagement, one of fighter aircraft and two of torpedo bombers. Once they are ready, the mission can be launched. Issue a fighter squadron on the deck. Issue a torpedo bomber squadron on the deck. Issue a torpedo bomber squadron on the deck. Stand by to start engine. Now we have to wait for the outcome of the attack. When the report comes in, you can... the events unfold. We must recover our planes upon their return. Remember to change the deck state to recovery so that they can land, sir. We spot the deck. Prepare for recovery. Stand by to recover aircraft. We have been made aware of yet another target to reconnoiter, Admiral. I suggest that we launch a recon mission to determine what's there. Go to the island to set the appropriate switch, change the deck state to launching, and then launch the mission. We spot the deck, prepare for launching. Start engine. states that it's an enemy base, sir. We must thoroughly identify the targets within the base before we can strike. Clear the flight deck and prepare for takeoff. identified the composition of the base so we can prepare an airstrike. In the strategy menu, you can see that the enemy has blocked one of our offensive maneuvers, so we must consider other options. We spot the deck, prepare for launching. an idea, sir. Let's place jinking in slot number one. As you can see from the description on the card, this maneuver boosts maneuvers in slots number one and number five. I would then recommend placing the strike from the sum maneuver in slot number three. We 
Please note the summaries in the boxes below, sir. These provide information about the current configuration of our strategy, such as its outcome. As you can see, our current strategy will ensure the safe return of our pilots and the total destruction of the enemy base. If you approve, sir, please confirm the strategy and set the recovery area on the tactical map. The mission will then be ready to launch. Launch aircraft! Now we've just got to wait to recover our planes. There is some... Else I'd like to mention, Admiral. In this case, we were able to draw up a strategy to defeat the enemy with one airstrike. But this is not always possible. When organizing our strategy, we can select a particular target within a base or fleet, represented by a card shown on the right side of the strategy menu, to select it for attack. This way, we can destroy the targets one by one over a number of airstrikes. Admiral, we have received word of an imminent enemy airstrike. We need to boost our defenses. The carrier's defenses are measured in defense points, shown on a meter in the top left corner of the screen. Hover your cursor over the defense meter for more information. Our strike group's escort ships share a separate defense value, shown on the highlighted escort icon. Hover over this to increase these values. We need to assign crew to a specific department. Please open the crew management menu to get started. We can increase both our defense values by assigning personnel to the anti-aircraft department. One point per crew unit. Drag and drop a crew unit there now. The number of available slots in the department can be upgraded later, sir. We can now exit this menu, sir. Ordering our ship's escort to assume a defensive formation will also increase both of our defense values. This can be achieved by launching a defensive position order. Select this order from the orders list, assign yourself to the task admiral, and then confirm the order. Same old, same old. In the island view, we can send an officer to the combat information center to set the switch to add one times CAP mission, enabling a combat air patrol mission. Sir. You must now enter the deck view, Admiral. Position two squadrons of fighter aircraft on the deck to prepare the CAP mission. Remember that you can see the planes required for a mission by hovering over its icon below, sir. Launch the mission, and you'll see both our carriers and escorts' defense values increase by two points. Another, the switch we want to set is in the pilot briefing room, Admiral. Move your available officer there. On my way! In this room, you can set the switch to add plus one carrier defense to give our carrier's defense value another boost. We are almost ready, sir. We can also use the active ability of one of our escort ships to get our defenses to the requisite level. Click the Heavy Cruiser's Play button. Two options will appear for this ship's active ability. One to raise our carrier's defense, the other to raise our escort's defense. Each of these options raises one of two defense values. Other ships' abilities will raise both. For now, click the Carrier Defense button. Excellent, Admiral. We are now in a much better position to defend against enemy attacks. You can click the incoming enemy button above the radar to see the approaching forces. Observe the value of the enemy's attack strength in comparison to our carrier's defense. We must now wait to see how the battle unfolds. Well done. 
done, sir. We successfully repelled the attack. However, our defense values have decreased. Some of the effects of the measures we took to raise our defenses were temporary, having been put to use, like the CAP mission, or worn off over time. Hover over the carrier's defense meter for more information. In the crew management menu, you will see that the anti-aircraft crew is currently busy maintaining the cannons, so they won't be available for other tasks for some time. To repair the ship faster, we need to assign as many men to damage control, DC, as we can, sir. The more units, as always, we must wait for the units to take their positions in DC. Once we have enough personnel assigned to DC, we'll have an effective workforce ready to deal with damage and malfunctions. Once they are in position, close the menu to return to the deck, Admiral. We can form one damage control team from the island. To do so, you must first move an officer to from here. You can enable add one times DC team, which adds an additional damage control team. Ready, sir! With our DC teams in place, repairs can begin. Enter this. There's been a malfunction in the engine section, Admiral. To assign the DC teams to repair this, click one of their portraits in the damage control panel and select malfunction repair represented by a cogwheel icon. Excellent. Now we need to wait for the malfunction to be fixed. Sir, a fire broke out in the hangar. We must assign one of our teams to firefighting duties. Quickly. This task is repped just in time. DC is dealing with the fire as we speak. Water has breached the helm section, Admiral. To pump out the water, a DC team must be assigned to de-flooding duties represented by the droplet icon. Teams to pump it out. Our men in DC are dealing with this, sir. We just need to wait for them to fit, as well as assigning tasks to DC teams. You can also take, there is already an officer in the navigation room. In there, you can set the switch to the function label, boost and gain direct control of DC teams. Awaiting orders. Some of our crew have been injured, sir. Click the highlighted event icon to move the camera to where this event is taking place. If more than one event is occurring, you can click on the event icon repeatedly to cycle through the different event locations. While injured crew will receive first aid from DC teams assigned to medical duties in the damage control panel, you can also tend to them quickly by sending the DC team directly to the segment marked with the cross icon. Select a DC team from the panel and then click the segment where they are needed. We must not delay, sir. On our way! We were able to save our injured shipmates, sir. Had we not reached them in time, they would still be alive, but in mortal danger. To make the medical department operational, you need to move an available crew unit there. The highlighted slot in the unassigned crew unit's panel, marked with a cross symbol, represents space in the sick bay. Move the critically injured, the unit will be inactive for a while, but they will recover. You can now close the crew management menu. Another enemy airstrike is imminent, Admiral. We survived the attack, but the carrier sustained significant damage. You must coordinate the repairs, sir. Sir, damage control is needed. There is a fire below deck. Sir, damage control is needed. 